Don't don't do what I did. That's just my tip. Like you. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. And I have to tell y'all, I did a thing that I said I would not do, which was binge watch Kindred. I know in the last video when I was talking about Octavia Butler's Kindred being made into a miniseries on Hulu. My takeaway was that I would not binge this series and I also suggested for y'all not to binge it. So I still stand by that. Y'all don't do what I did. But since I did it, I'm gonna give y'all all the information on like what went wrong, all the way wrong with this series. I received some fresh flowers. Um, I'm getting them bi-weekly delivered now because I really enjoy flowers in my house and I don't live near Trader Joe's or Farmer's Market anymore to be able to like pick up fresh flowers. So my new thing is getting them delivered. So I'm checking out this new company called Books. This is my second round. And I figured while we do this little chit chat, I would just go ahead and like um, organize these vases and like get these flowers sorted because it's late. And these flowers came earlier in the day, y'all, and they're gonna be unalived in a second if I don't go ahead and get them in there. So let's just get into all of it all at once. Okay, so I fully recognize that um, the Kindred miniseries is an adaptation. And so with it being an adaptation, we have to know that everything is not going to be exactly the way it was in the book, which I don't have a problem with. You know, like inspired by adaptations are fine. But I don't know if adaptation is a word that I would quite use for this. And the main reason I say this is because um, if you had never read the book, I feel like it would be very difficult for you to follow along with this storyline. They change so many things, but change things that really don't tell a like cohesive storyline. And so because of that, I feel like if you were just watching it like off the cuff with no additional information, you might be confused. That's just my take. Like, you'd be confused. If the person who read the book, I was confused. So I know that, like, if you had never read the book, like, there's definitely going to be a level of confusion there. Do I think that means they shouldn't have made the movie? I'm not saying that. Um, but I don't know, y'all. It's just, it's, it's not giving away it's supposed to. Also, I don't know. I feel like this little bouquet is nice. So basically what I ordered was two bouquets. And I typically split them between two vases. So one I put in my kitchen nook and one I put in my living room. But this little bouquet is not really given. So this might all end up being one bouquet. I don't know yet. So I'm just going to kind of go through some of the things that were changed in um, the mini series that I felt were weird. Um, and maybe we'll like provide some clarity to people who have not read the book but watched the show. So the first one is the relationship between Dana and Kevin. So in the book, Dana and Kevin are married. Like they are already in a relationship together. You get some background and story behind like how they first got together. Um, and they have been married for a considerable amount of time before Dana is ever snatched into the past, right? So basically um, Dana was working some odd jobs um, using like one of those um, companies that like find employment for you. And she needs to white dude at work um they kind of hit it off start talking um and so dana's working all jobs because she's a writer basically and so like she hasn't been able to like actually get any of her stuff published and so this is how she pays her bills come to find out um the guy comes up to her and was like hey i heard that you were a writer me too you want to go like get lunch or whatever this is my last day working here and she's like oh, okay we can get lunch um and they get lunch and basically hit it off and become inseparable after that so um, they're living together um, and decide to move um, to California together. And so that changes a lot of the plot. So basically, like, they are living in California because, like, Kevin basically ends up hitting it big with his books. So for the most part, like, he's funding the majority of their life. Um, and Dana is still trying to get her, her writing off the ground. I think that it being written this way was great because... It gave them, I guess, like a good enough like background for Kevin to be invested in the fact that like Dana is being like sucked away. So in the actual miniseries, Kevin and Dana don't know each other. Like Dana is a stranger. 
So Dana is a complete stranger to Kevin. Um, so basically, uh, Dana and her aunt and her uncle go out to dinner, and Kevin is like their waiter, basically. Um, and Dana, because she's Lucy's phone, um, is not charged. She can't call an Uber to get home. She doesn't drive, doesn't have a car, whatever. And Kevin offers to give her a ride home. The reason this is weird is like, it's their very first time meeting. She invites him in. They decide to, I think, have sex at this point. Um, and she just gets like pulled away and so for him he's like yo I don't know you you just disappear like what is going on and also the thing about Kevin in the miniseries is that he's written as a way dumber character like he just seems very aloof doesn't really understand what's going on doesn't understand context clues and like the Kevin of the series was not that like Kevin might have irritated me for several reasons many of which because like at first he was gaslighting her and acting like he didn't believe that she was um that she had been te teleported back in time even though he saw her disappear he didn't just act confused and aloof and so that was just really weird to me i didn't understand why his character was written that way um the other thing is because these people are strangers like in the miniseries kevin has no reason to like continue to like want to support her when she's going back in time and he actually like tries to disappear on her at one point in time too um and so you know it just like makes for this added amount of tension in the storyline that i felt like was just very unnecessary and i just think that like we didn't lose anything if they were already together so in my mind that was just a bad insert writing into the story I can't get this cut, so we're not going to. The next thing that was weird to me was like Dana's mental health. So in the actual story, we never get the sense that like something is up with Dana's mental health. Um, but in the book, I mean in the miniseries, it is alluded to and like specifically mentioned at multiple times. So in the book, Dana is seen as this very strong character, right? Like she gets stuck back in time. She has to figure out what to do. She's a strategist. She has to figure out how to like ensure that see yeah i think this is not enough for one bouquet it's it's giving sparse uh, all right let's keep going like she's strategizing she's trying to figure out how to you know ensure that her family has the things they need to be able to survive a long time for their legacy all of that in the show like dana just acts like she can't get it together so number one her grandmother passes away and she decides to sell a brownstone in new york and like she said it's so quick and she got some money from it but like we all know that brownstones in new york go for money like it's no way that i would ever as a black person sell a brownstone in new york I, could, would i rent it out sure but sell it no it does not make sense and so like it was already like planting the seed of like erratic behavior from her so she sells the brownstone then when she moves to california she moves without a car she's leaves all these like vintage albums out on the front yard it just like you could tell at every turn she was being painted as somebody who like kind of couldn't get it together and then her aunt and uncle actually allude to her mental health um and so i just think that like both i think that it was written that way so that she would be seen as like an unreliable narrator in some ways like she just seemed way more of an unreliable character in the um miniseries that she did a novel and i just felt like it didn't do anything for the show like her not being um i guess a little bit more take charge made her a really insignificant main character like i was just kind of like oh, okay that's the main character cool i guess and like she even gets a ride home from a strange man because she didn't have her phone charged when she already knows she don't have a car and is not from this place it's just like she's just making bad choice after bad choice and that just like is not the dana that we got in the book like it's just not also y'all hear my my little child over here grunting so um he's joining us for this video y'all so the next thing is Dana's relationship with her uncle and her aunt. Um, so in the um, original book, her aunt and uncle raised her. So her parents passed, um, she's orphaned, and her aunt and her uncle raised her. So they have a good relationship. The only like disagreement they have is basically they don't like the fact that she decides that she wants to marry a white man. But other than that, like her relationship with them is solid. And so like it provides a little bit of color and backstory into like Dana's childhood, her life, etc. However, in the um in the uh, miniseries her aunt, her aunt and her uncle are already estranged from her so basically dana's parents pass away 
And um, she lives with her grandmother. Then her grandmother passes away. And her aunt and uncle basically just abandon her. Like, they don't go to check on her. They don't go to make sure she's good. And a lot of that is because I think her aunt spent a lot of time trying to make sure that her mother was okay. Because her mother seemed to, like, experience some, like, mental health challenges. Um, and so, basically, it came to, like, like Dana's aunt was, like, fed up with it. And basically just left Dana high and dry. Which is, like, just problematic and messed up. So, um, Dana's, in the miniseries, Dana's... Um, aunt and uncle happen to live um, in California where she moves to and she goes to get um, dinner with them and like it's just a really strained situation basically um, and I just feel like I didn't have an issue with this rewrite necessarily but it it just felt like it heightened the stakes in a really interesting way because like you have like the aunt and uncle as this like character foil then you have these like white next door neighbors who are basically karen as this character foil then you have the real like auntie bellum south as this character foil and so there's like um familial character foils like community character foils and then like the actual like environmental character foils um and i don't know like i don't know if that extra layer was necessary up next we have the relationship between dana and rufus so in the book there's really an opportunity for I hope y'all can hear me in the book there's an opportunity for Dana and Rufus to um like really create a bond even though it's like kind of a, like a little bit of a parasitic bond because Rufus needs Dana and for Dana to be able to like be born she needs Rufus to be alive my child is tearing his hands up he's starting to tease and yeah I hope y'all can hear me I have no idea um, but in the um, miniseries, like, they don't really get an opportunity to, like, really engage each other in a way that their, their relationship is, like, created. And it just makes it, like, a tough watch. And I kind of don't believe their relationship. Like, it, it doesn't seem real. And so since their relationship is not more tightly established in the miniseries, like, Dana's relationship kind of becomes, like, more of this a little bit of a, like, Vammy figure. More so than like, you know, this strategist who's trying to keep her family legacy and keep ensure that like she can actually, you know, um, be born later. So I don't know. There was just like, I didn't really like how it was painted. I think they could have taken a little bit more time and care there than what they did. The one, I guess, change that I really did like, and I will say at first, I did not know where it was going. And I was definitely like, mm, I don't know about this, y'all. Um, but once they did it, it was really good. And that was um, the, the inclusion of Dana's mom. So in the mini series, Dana's mom is, um, she fi Dana finds out that her mom is alive and actually in, stuck in the past in the Auntie Bella South in Maryland. Um, and in the book, Dana's mom had just like, Dana's an orphan, her mom passed away basically. And so that was really cool because as far as Dana knew, like her parents were um, alive in a car accident. And so basically what happened was her mom was driving, her dad was in a passenger seat and her mom gets sucked back to the past. Dana's dad, unfortunately, is unalived in the car, but her mom is living well. And her mom has this inkling that Dana one day might have these, like, powers too and also, like, end up in the past. Um, and I feel like that was, like, done really well as a, like, plot device and giving us a little bit more color. Because Dana's mom had basically been living in the past for, like, decades. Um, I had been waiting to see if her daughter would show up or not. The thing that I feel like they didn't do well was figure out how to then execute that the relationship between the two of them. And I get that it would have been tough to like create a relationship out of nothing because Dana hadn't seen her parents since she was a young child. But I do feel like the showrunner and script writers did not do a good enough job trying to establish some type of relationship between them. It just seemed like Dana's mom cared more about everybody else there than she did her own flesh and blood. And I just, as a mom, don't believe that, like, the child that you birthed, knowing that, like, you weren't ever sure if they were okay and etc., like, that you just, like, would be fine to, like, see them again and then, like, not fight tooth and nail to, like, be in a relationship with them and to make sure that they were good. And I get that Dana's an adult when this happens, so I guess maybe she thinks Dana got herself, but I ain't like that. Um, so those were my 
changes? I'd be curious for people who have read the book and watched the miniseries, like, what did you think? Do you feel like it worked, didn't work? Do you have an issue with those changes? Because for me, I just, I couldn't. So I will say I got to about 95% of the way finished the series and eventually had to say, not nah, good. Um, but I want to hear from y'all. Like, did y'all like it? What's up? Um, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please hit the like button. Um, I always appreciate all of my subbies. And I thank you so much for watching my channel. Also, please share this across your social media channels with anybody who you think um, reads Octavia Butler, likes Octavia Butler, has read Kindred, or is planning to watch the show. All right, peace, y'all. I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye.